At the end of last month, Microsoft revealed their plans for Windows 11, and on June 28th, released an insider preview to the public. It's been a few weeks since then, and having had some time to test, we'd like to share our thoughts and findings. Before we start, consider liking and subscribing for more content. The installation process is relatively easy as long as your PC meets requirements for the Insider program. These requirements are less restrictive than the requirements listed for the full version of Windows 11. If you install the Insider version and your system is not compatible with the general release, you will have to install a different operating system when Windows 11 is officially available. Anything noted here can be changed in an update, especially technical faults. The OS is currently only released as a beta, so major changes could occur between the version we viewed and the release. Some features, such as native Android apps, aren't available in the preview build, so we cannot comment on them at the current time. In terms of compatibility with applications, every app we tried seemed to run as it did on Windows 10, even automatically adjusting its UI thanks to the new generic Windows design tweaks. There were stability issues, notably some 3D applications experienced crashes, but these were infrequent and normally only happened when they were first opened. Moving on to first impressions, upon first loading into the system, opinions were positive. The new icons for everything on the desktop looked good, and the taskbar items being in the middle was a novel change. The start menu has been refined from seeming cluttered in Windows 10 into being clearer and less cluttered, no longer stretching horizontally across the screen. Elements have more room to breathe, making the menu more readable. The search icon's new design matches the start menu. The space is used in the same way as Windows 10, besides the search box being at the top, with recent items and common apps being presented before you search. Task View has been given a new look, but remains the same as Windows 10, allowing you to functionally have multiple desktops that you can switch between. A new feature compared to Windows 10, Widgets. It acts like a news feed containing preset information boxes for items such as weather or sports, as well as Microsoft's own news service. File Explorer has had a makeover, with new, much larger icons in general. Items are generally more spaced out as well, showing less per page, clearly designed to help touchscreen users. The Windows Store has also got a new look, though it's still functionally the same. It claims to be in beta, so it's likely we'll see more changes later on. Hidden icons on the right hand of the hotbar are treated the same as Windows 10, just click to reveal. Wi-Fi, volume and battery are now all part of a mobile-esque submenu. The menu also includes brightness, Bluetooth, airplane mode, focus assist and accessibility options like narration, sticky keys and the magnifier. The calendar time and notification center have been crushed into one button as well, meaning you open the calendar every time you check notifications. Taking a step back to the battery will take you to the new settings page, which has seen major changes. With navigation constantly available on the left portion of the window, you no longer have to dip in and out of submenus. Any part of the UI that hasn't been given a full revamp is still affected by the default changes to styling. All apps not maximized or in full screen now have rounded edges, and the buttons now have a Windows 11 style. The system sounds of Windows 11 are also different from Windows 10. The startup sound is now on by default, and most, if not all, system sounds have changed. There's a new right-click context menu that has been made a lot larger, with icons replacing rename, cut, copy, paste, and delete in File Explorer. The original concept menu is available within this new menu. Microsoft Edge is still here, and Windows still pushes you somewhat aggressively into using it. And finally, the snipping tool is still moving. We tested multiple productivity benchmarks on two identical systems, with the only difference being the operating system. The systems used, a Lenovo X1 Yogas, share identical specs, both featuring i5-7300U processors, identical RAM and SSD capacities. So the SSDs are a different make. So the only difference between performance we would expect to see would be from the operating system and the natural deviation of different machines' performance. Across all the benchmarks we performed, the Windows 11 machine ran within 10% of the results of the Windows 10 machine, with the trend of the 11 machine having the lowest score in the majority of cases. However, there's a key outlier in the Passmark performance test. Specifically, in the disk benchmark, we saw significantly higher scores on the Windows 11 machine, about 50% higher than the Windows 10 machine despite all of the tests coming back lower. As I guess, this could be to do with Windows 11 direct storage, but is more likely to be affected by the make of the SSDs being different. While we're still developing our workflow for testing games, having an unfortunately small sample size of two games tested on both systems, we saw a reverse of the trend in the productivity benchmarks. The Windows 11 machine tended to have better performance. This was tested with a Quadro P2000 as an external GPU. We performed benchmarks on both systems sharing the same in-game graphical settings. While for Assassin's Creed Origins, this only increased the average frame rate from 28 to 30, in Civilization VI we saw a jump from 30 to 40. Simply bizarre to see games performing better when every other workload seemed to be performing worse on the system. Whether this is due to optimizations or simply an effect of the Silicon Mark tree is unclear with the sample size of two units. 
but considering the lower performance in benchmarks and high performance in games, there seem to have been some performance changes through the operating system. Windows 11 so far is shaping up to be an adequate operating system. Outside of a few minor complaints, there's no big issue to point at and decry as the reason not to use it. But there's nothing there yet that would convince me that Windows 10 needed replacing. The moment-to-moment -moment experience is really similar, and while the new UI is certainly nice, a new theme for Windows isn't a compelling reason all on its own, especially if you're not a fan of the new design. As of now, it's impossible to give a full perspective on Windows 11. With promised features not yet implemented, hardware requirements not settled upon while being currently contentious, and the fact that the insider build might run on systems that won't be allowed to run a release version in a year, it makes it hard to recommend to anyone other than enthusiasts to upgrade. Where Windows 11 really fails is the lack of a big feature that could draw people in. Android apps is nice, but only benefits a general audience of people who don't have phones but need mobile apps or developers making Android apps, neither of which are particularly big audiences. If it had something to appeal to a more general, perhaps less tech-savvy audience, you might have a bigger adoption rate. Perhaps phone screen streaming to have a bigger screen for apps, animated wallpapers built in with native support, or perhaps more privacy features in an ever more privacy-concerned world. But as things stand, Windows 10 is still going to receive support until 2025, and maybe in that time Windows 11 will mature and have features worth upgrading to. We certainly hope so. Unless you're already planning on upgrading your PC to newer hardware soon, it's hard to recommend you upgrade now. When the time comes to upgrade, we expect it to be a smoother process than previous OS upgrades, hardware requirements notwithstanding.